Now in this video we will talk about the saturation temperature and saturation pressure. Okay. So if you remember that at atmospheric pressure that is 1 atm, the boiling point of water is 100 degree Celsius. If I increase this pressure, let us say I increase it to 2 atmospheres or let us say 8 atmospheres. Okay. This temperature of boiling would also increase. So as you increase the pressure at which the boiling takes place at atmospheric conditions, the, the temperature also will start to increase. Okay. And the same can be said if you decrease the pressure. If you decrease the pressure, the temperature at which the boiling takes place will decrease. For example, uh, at, at, at atmospheric pressure, we have a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. If you decrease it, let us say you have 70% of vacuum. You have 70% vacuum, which is 0.3 atm. Okay. At this, just a random figure I am giving. So, let us say at 30 degrees Celsius, you have your boiling. Okay. So, you can see that how the boiling point is varying by varying the pressure at which this boiling takes place. Alright. So, this temperature at which boiling takes place is called boiling point and similarly, the temperature at which the condensation takes place is called condensation point. Okay. So, you can say that the temperature at which boiling or condensation takes place is called saturation temperature, is called saturation temperature and corresponding to every saturation temperature you have a value of pressure and we call this value of pressure as saturation pressure. Okay. So, you can see this variation on this uh, you know, graph between saturation pressure and saturation temperature. You can see how it is varying. So, this is the saturation curve. On the left side of the saturation curve, you have liquid phase and on the right hand side of the saturation curve, we have superheated vapor phase. Okay. So, on this you have saturated vapor. You cool it, you, you condense, you heat it, you get into the superheated range. Okay. Now, whenever you have a point which is lying on the saturation curve, okay, so these are called saturated states, saturated states or I would say vapor states. Okay. Now, if you have a point which is lying in this region, okay, or let us say, let me just have this re this point over here. So, this point is lying in the liquid region, which is towards this side. So, let us say the saturation temperature and pressure are these values. Okay, so for the given fluid and for the given conditions, this is the saturation temperature and this is the saturation pressure. Now, if you have your state of fluid which is lying over here, so corresponding to this, it is at a lower temperature as compared to the saturation temperature and it is at a lower pressure as compared to the saturation pressure. So, this state, this state is called subcooled state subcooled state and this is mostly liquid. Now, the difference between the saturation temperature minus the temperature at which your liquid exists in the subcooled region, this is called the degree of soup undercooling, degree of undercooling or degree of subcooling. Alright. So, this is when you have your state which is below the saturation conditions. Alright. So, I hope you understood the idea behind saturation temperature and saturation pressure that is the temperature at which 
boiling and condensation takes place boiling or condensation takes place is called saturation temperature corresponding to every saturation temperature you will have a corresponding saturation pressure and this is the graph which shows you the variation of saturation pressure and saturation temperature so i hope you understood this now in the next video onwards we'll look at some property diagrams of pure substances and we'll start by understanding the volume temperature diagram